everyone, welcome to the Power Play with CJ. We're focusing on the rumors circulating that the Chicago Blackhawks could be looking to reacquire Andrew Ladd as the uh, deadline gets closer. Obviously, Ladd is a free agent this year, and with Winnipeg re-signing Dustin Bufflin, um, you know they could see you know Ladd as the asset they trade away to you know add more you know young players, picks what have you in the organization. I mean, it's important to remember Andrew Ladd is still only 30 years old. You always think he's a little bit older because he's been around for such a long time, but you know, you look at a guy like this and you say to yourself, all right, you know, he had 62 points last year. He always been a, a very – you think, think about how, more, how much more productive he's been since Chicago where he's been, you know, more of a uh, – you, you know, been more of a featured player, so to speak, with Winnipeg slash Atlanta versus being a bit player on the Blackhawks, you know, 20, uh, 2010 championship team. You know, you look at, you know, how much his offensive repertoire has widened since he got traded and, uh, you know, just that he's – you know, really, a guy that can, can fit in in any one of a number of roles. And, I mean, you look at him possibly playing alongside you on the Tavs, Marion Hosa. That's a pretty good line right there, obviously. And, um, you know, with, I think Winnipeg would have to eat a little bit of the salary. But, you know, the Blackhawks have the assets. And, I mean, you know, as much as it would suck trading away a first-round pick again this year, you know, they've got a lot of great young players in the organization where it's like, who gives a shit? You know, you have the opportunity to win your fourth cup and go back-to-back. -back. It's like... You know, this is uh, something that, you know, if I'm Stan Bowman in the front office, I'm looking around going, hmm, this could be a, a real, uh, real big get. And, again, the familiarity with Quenville's system and with, you know, a lot of the players in that lineup, you know, whether it's Jonathan Tays, Pat Canahosa, Dunn Keith, Brent Seabrook. They just rattled off everyone that was on that original team that uh, thing was on. Um, lad. But, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it all shakes up. I mean... They're going to make a move at the deadline. I think, you know, the West is pretty much them in Los Angeles. I mean, you know, teams like Dallas, me, Dallas St. Louis, Nashville to a certain degree, maybe Anaheim, um, you know, can definitely be, you know, teams that, that you know, are th threats. But right now it's it's the Blackhawks and Kings, just like, you know, pretty much every other year when you think about it. And I think adding Andrew Ladd would be, or, you know, reacquiring Andrew Ladd would be a, uh, a good move for the, for the team and for the uh, their hopes of being the first team in, you know, what, 18 years to go back to back. But, you know, we'll see how it all works out. I know it, I don't know how much it's out there, but I think the other decent fit for Andrew Ladd would be Florida. You know, Dale Talon loves getting former Blackhawks, so that that's a possible uh, destination for him. I think Nashville could be in for him, being on him as well. You know, maybe uh, Anaheim. You know, I know, I believe him and Ryan gets off played in junior hockey. Yeah, for Calgary. Yeah, they played. Yeah, Calgary Hitman. Once upon a time. So, if Winnipeg does elect to move him, there will be no shortage of suitors. And as much as it's more of a buyer's market this year, I think Winnipeg will get a uh, fair competition for him. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it all shakes up. Anyway, that's our next episode of the Power Play with CJ. Stay tuned for episodes throughout the season and beyond. Later, guys.